We've already looked at vector multiplication with a scalar, but when it comes to multiplying two vectors together, there are two different ways to go about doing this. One is called the dot product, and the other is the cross product. First, let's take a look at the dot product. The dot product results in a scalar value. The best way to visualize the result and purpose of the dot product is to imagine projecting one vector onto the other. So we're going to take a look at this and ask, what is the magnitude of the resulting projection? If it's positive, that means the original two vectors were pointing in a similar direction. If it's negative, the original vectors pointed in different directions. If it's exactly zero, then the original vectors were perpendicular. We'll see later on in the course how the dot product is used to determine if a polygon is pointed towards or away from a light source, and thus provides useful information related to visually shading a surface. To calculate a dot product, we multiply each set of components and then sum the results. So we'll start off with vector A having the coordinates 3, 0 0.5, and vector B with the coordinates 2 and 4. So far, these are what our vectors would look like on a graph, and this projection helps us visualize the scalar value we're after here. So we'll continue by multiplying the x components together and summing those with the y components multiplied together. Simplifying this gives us 6 plus 2, and a final scalar value of 8. And so we can see here that the final result is positive, meaning that the original vectors were pointing in the same direction. The dot product can also be used to determine the angle between two vectors. So let's say we have one vector with the coordinates 3, 0, So 3, 0 is down here, and we have another vector with the coordinates uh, 0, 4. So 0 on the x and 4 on the y. And what if we wanted to try and find the angle between them? Well we can use the following formula. We can say that uh, vectors, vectors a dot b is equal to the magnitude, and I'm going to use double bars here to uh, represent the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle theta. And this is theta right here. So if we want to solve for theta, then we just rearrange this and say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. A dot B is going to be fairly simple to solve, so we'll just do that over here. We'll take the x coordinates, 3 times 0, and the y coordinates, 0 times 4. These, of course, both equal 0, so our dot product is equal to 0. We know the magnitude of A. Well, that's very simple. We, we can just uh, we know the magnitude of A is 3. Just by looking at it, we can tell that. So this is going to be a value of 3. The magnitude of B is 4. Again, we can tell just by looking at it. Zero divided by 12 will still be zero. So in the end here, we are taking the inverse cosine of zero which is, of course, equal 
to 90 degrees. And well, we already knew that that was true. The cross product is quite different from the dot product. It results in a vector value pointing perpendicular to the original two vectors. While the result of a cross product will always be a perpendicular vector, we do need one more piece of information to determine which way the positive axis of this new vector will point. This is determined using the right and left handed rules. First, we need to visually shift the tail of vector B to the head of vector A. Now using a hand, imagine that your index finger points in the direction the vectors flow. Your thumb will show which way the cross product will point. In the right-handed coordinate system, if vectors A and B turn clockwise, then the vector A cross B will point away from you. If vectors A and B turn counterclockwise, then A cross B will point towards you. The exact opposite is true for the left-handed system. The cross product calculation is a bit more cumbersome to do, but a good way to remember it is that the calculation for a given component only involves the other two components. So let's calculate a cross product real quickly. We'll have one vector which has the coordinates 1, 3, and 4, and we'll multiply that with another vector. And this vector will have the coordinates 2, negative 5, and 8. To find the x coordinate of the resulting vector, we'll need to take y1 times z2 and subtract z1 times y2, so z1 and y2. For the y component, we'll need to take z1 times x2, so z1 times x2. And we'll subtract x1 times z2, x1 and z2. For the z component, it'll be x1 times y2, x1 times y2. minus y1 times x2. Once we simplify and solve this, we'll end up with 44 in the x, 0 in the y, and negative 11 in the z component. An interesting fact about the cross product is that the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors equals the area of the parallelogram formed by the original vectors. This is very useful for calculating polygon area. Cross products are often used to calculate the normal vector of a polygon. As we'll see in a future lecture, the most primitive type of polygon is one with three sides. Since a three-sided shape cannot be bent or folded, it is guaranteed to be planar. This means that the normal vector of any three-sided polygon is guaranteed to represent the direction that that polygon faces. Since normal vectors are concerned only with providing directional information, they are always normalized. 